Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents on our Tuesday meeting discussion continues. Leaders, you are under demonic attack. Why? To stop God's call on your life. So many of us have had uh, attacks from childhood, from the demonic. We have had, uh, uh, we have been bullied through rejection, through, uh, you know, people, ostr- you know, they ostracize. They, they push us aside. They don't want to be bothered. We're made fun of. Our feelings are hurt. All of that. Okay. We have issues with our parents. We have all kind of stuff. And insecurities galore. Now, here's the thing. We're sensitive to the spirit realm. And what ends up happening is during those years, uh, it, it happens when we're unsaved as well as when we're saved. But here's the trip. There are times... A little peekable, a little snippet of the gifting of God shows even when we're unsaved. I know some of you, some of you remember when I shared about how the Lord showed me a scenario of a friend of mine. We were sitting with a guy she had just met that night. And he liked her, he she liked him. He was fine. He was a policeman. He was well-groomed, well-manicured. The man had it together from head to toe. And he was no dummy, baby. He had it going on. However, the whole time they're sitting there making eyes at each other, I'm seeing a scenario play right before my eyes, sitting in the restaurant, sipping on my coffee. I'm knowing something I'm not supposed to know. Hmm. So I asked her to come aside and she's like looking at me like, girl, don't mess my thing up. I'm like, just come on outside for a minute. I got to talk to you. She's my best friend. I couldn't let her go into what I saw happening. And I told her what I saw. I said, you were on the ground and you were backing up in terror as he stood over you, getting ready to beat and rape you. He is very sadistic. He will hurt you, girl. I mean, he will hurt you. I saw it plain as day. Don't give this man your number. Don't give him your address. Please, whatever you do, do not go out with him tonight. Don't go anywhere with him. Just leave him alone. Take his number. I told her she was backing up. He was coming over her. He was raping her. He would... He would knock her out. She would come back too. He'd rape her again. He'd beat her. She was backing up crying. I mean, she was bawling. Just please don't hurt me. She was petrified. I'm seeing this whole thing playing before my eyes. It wasn't anybody else. It was this guy sitting with us at the table at the restaurant. Now, what I didn't know until here, 30 some years later, my friend tells me after she saw my video, she said, what I didn't tell you was that I forgot what you t- what you told me. And I did get back in touch with him later. And he did rape me. And he did beat me. And he would choke me out till I was unconscious. And he raped me, make me get dressed, and then s- snatch everything and rape me again. And he'd make me get dressed and snatch and rape me again. And he choked me out choked me out, choked me out. And I wasn't sure I was going to live to see the next day. Now, I was not saved, neither was she. But when you have the gift in you, God will use it even when you're unsaved to protect somebody. Mm. She didn't put two and two back together until after we talked about it after she told me that it actually happened and she realized that was, you know, so yeah, God still uses those gifts. They're in you. They're in you from birth. So a lot of us have gifts we don't even know about yet because like the talents, when God gives the talents to people, he wants them to use them. He wants them to stir up the gift that's within, but if they're not ready yet, he'll leave, he'll leave it dormant and unnoticeable. Unless there's a real emergency like there was when I was out in the streets with my friend. But he'll leave him dormant until you have totally committed your life to the Lord. 
then they start to rise. Well, there are times when you're trying to rise to what God has called you to do when the demons try to attack you with fear and intimidation. And they will try to neutralize the weaponry that God has already planted within you because he does not want you to allow yourself to be used by God. He doesn't want it. So he will send all kinds of demonic attacks. Why are they attacking you? To make you question you. To make you question where you are with God and where you are in your spiritual walk. And there's no question, but that's their assignment. And they're using the gift that God has given you to channel in, to mess with you. So at th those times, you must read scripture. You must equip yourself. You must build up yourself in the most holy faith. You must put on the whole armor of God because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You have to build yourself up in God's word. You have to equip yourself and read it out loud and tell yourself, I am chosen. I am, I am a child of the most high king. God, Jesus, you read the words of Jesus. I have given you authority. You shall cast out demons. You shall raise the sick. You shall heal. You shall raise the dead. You shall heal the sick. You shall deliver. You shall do all these things in my name. That's your authority. And once you recognize and are convinced of your authority, then what you end up doing is taking authority over the spiritual bullies who have been taking authority over you. And you shut that mess down. It may take time, but you keep at it till they're all gone. Gee, when God told the Israelites to drive out the enemy, it's the attitude, we must have a killer instinct. There is a time to kill. And when you're ready to kill, you're ready to do damage to these demons who have been damaging you. Time out. We're done. No more. Stops here. Ends. Over. Case closed. Curtain down. Show's over. Party's over. Go. Never return. Or I will put a hurting on you through God's angels. I mean, you have to, you have to have that fearless fearless, tenacious. You have to be more, more persistent than they are. You have to be more relentless than they are. You have to be more murderous because they can't hurt you like you can hurt them. And they know it. Problem is, do you? So when God is raising up leaders, the first thing he starts doing is making us become aware of who we are, good, bad, indifferent, and beautiful, strengths and weaknesses, clean and unclean. He begins to introduce us to him to know who he is as a father, as a counselor, as a savior, as a protector, as a guide as his path through his power he begins to introduce to us all the power we have at our disposal he empowers us through his holy spirit so that we're not trying to battle the supernatural through the natural which is undoable you can only do it when you're filled with the holy spirit daily daily and I've been baptized and everything else, baptized in the Holy Ghost, baptized in water, filled with the Holy Ghost again and again. You got to fill your gas tank. You can't drive that sucker till it's empty. You got to refill it. Every time I start my prayer, Lord, forgive me for sin. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. And then you start your stuff. You plead your case. Say what's on your heart, what's on your mind. And the thing is, you have to ask God to open your eyes, your mind, and your understanding to what's going on inside of you. Listen, as a leader, how can you understand Brother Appleseed's problems when you don't even know what's going on with you? 
How can you confront Sister Pumpkin's heartache when you won't confront your own?